Okay, now that you've created all the materials and the section, we are ready to model the bridge. So let's close that. And I will use a method which consists in uh, first modeling a 2D uh, cable state bridge, then to copy these uh, model uh, along the Y direction and uh, link all the elements using the C-beam girders in order to create my 3D model. So to model the bridge, you can simply go into uh, the cable state bridge wizard and by filling all this option the software will generate automatically the 2D uh, cable state bridge for you. So if you choose to generate a symmetric bridge you only have to define the point A and B position and it will generate the main uh, it will generate the two parts of the bridge in a symmetric manner. So actually here I will use uh, the default options to generate the bridge. So um, here you can see the materials I defined previously, the cable, uh, the deck, so I will use the girder material for the deck, the tower, so the pillar here, and the section is uh, also the same. Um, for the cable element type, truss elements are generated and uh, if cable is selected it will automatically generate equivalent truss elements for linear analysis and elastic catenary elements, uh, cable elements for nonlinear analysis. Now I will check this shape of deck option. Here uh, you can choose 0. Point, you can choose 5% for the inclination of the deck and uh, the main length of the bridge so uh, the arc, arc length okay. if you want the drawing to draw in uh, real time you can check this option and it will directly draw the bridge in this window so you see if you increase the slope it will give you something like that so here we'll just choose 5% OK, and click on OK, and my 2D cable state bridge is easily generated. Now one thing to know is that when you use the wizard, duplicated nodes will be generated at the total location. So if you look closer here, you see that you have two nodes at the same position. So in order to... Um, uh, to do the analysis afterwards, we have to merge all the nodes in this uh, model. So, go in the node property, select merge, select all the nodes and elements in the model, and just click on apply to merge all the nodes. Now, the nodes 34 and 35 were together, now they are merged in one uh, node. Now I will work a bit on the tower modeling. The towers are a bit inclined and to model that we have to uh, we have to move these uh, nodes on uh, the y direction of 2 meter around. So select translate node here uh, select the option move use the selection window to select these nodes and uh, just choose equal distance minus 2 and apply to move this node of the tower now another thing is that uh, when you move the node the local coordinate system of the inclined tower element is changed uh, with the movement of the node. So uh, it is actually a built-in feature of the program. But here we want to uh, put all the local axes uh, in the same direction. So we have to change that. First of all we have to see the local axis, so go in the display mode and element select local axis 
and if you look closer you see here the y direction um, let me make a zoom you see the y direction is not in the same direction than uh, here so uh, we have to click on change parameter and uh, using the selection option select inter intersection line to select this element now click on element local axis change and we will rotate it of 90 degree in order to align the local axis with the other uh, elements local axis now to generate the tower cross beams we have to divide the tower elements in the z axis direction using the divide element uh, feature so go back in this position and we'll go into node select divide element now go in the view tab and again select this intersection line comment to select the tower elements now here in the divide element uh, work tree will just select a frame for the element type unequal distance um, it will be 10 and 36 meter for the division check the merge duplicate node and apply to divide the element towers now to generate the 3d model uh, we have first to use the mirror uh, option so go into the this view um, before applying the mirror we have to move all the 2d model of 7.8 meter in the y direction in order to mirror it uh, in function of the plane defined by the zero position so go into this node element click on translate then select all the nodes and elements select the mode uh, on move and the distance minus 7.8 meter and click on apply so all the elements were moved in this direction now I will copy the cable the main girders and the towers symmetrically uh, to the center line of the bridge so uh, we have to use the mirror element option again select all the elements copy choose the zx plane at 0 meter um, don't forget to check copy element attributes and mirror beta angle and click on apply to generate the mirror copy of the bridge now we can uh, clear the display by unactivating the local axis and uh, will generate the main girder cross beam so to do that click on extrude element you can go into the top view go into this uh, option and uh, choose the material girder activate the nodes too click on add close now we'll unselect uh, using the unselect window this part of the bridge and I will extrude the node into line elements to create the cross beam between the two uh, parts of the bridge for the material um, use the C beam girder same for the section use translate for the generation type equal distance and here uh, enter the distance between the the two parts so it's 15.6 it's the width of widths of the main span one time click on apply to generate all the cross beam come back into the into the eyes of view 
and will now generate the crossbeam for the towers. So go in the front view and activate only these towers element using the selection by window and activate. Okay. Now select create elements. So general beam tapered beam. Select C beam pillin for the material and the section. Click on this nodal connectivity window and directly on the screen select the element uh, of the towers to link together. Now I will generate the tower bearing by creating new nodes at the tower bearing location. Um, if you make a zoom you see this part uh, is disconnected and I will project it on this uh, face. So to do that again node element uh, and you have a project option so uh, select single and now you can select the nodes which have to be projected so select also the two nodes on the other tower here Okay, and um, select project on a plane and just select the plane, uh, the three points to create the plane. Now activate merge duplicate nodes and intersect frame elements and apply to create these projected nodes. Now again we'll generate nodes at the tower bearing using the translate node option. Translate node, select single, select uh, so the nodes you created are ranging from 149 to 152 so you can directly enter this in this window and it will select the four nodes you just created. The mode will be copy um, 0 0.27 in the Z direction and click on apply to generate these nodes. So these uh, elements, these nodes will be used to generate the bearing for the tower. So this model, uh, to model this tower bearing, we use the element link. Um, so go into the boundary window and you have elastic link. So click on add, general type, and now you have to enter the values. Uh, so it will be like that. Be careful about the unit. Now we'll copy this elastic link uh, so it will automatically be assigned to the second tower. So we we'll just have to enter the distance. Uh, where to copy this and the two nodes select like that one and two and you see uh, the B rings have been generated also on the second tower at the same time and now I have to activate all and uh, I will use the same procedure to generate the end bearings of the bridge. So again, uh, use translate elements. Uh, sorry, translate node. Um, select single. We'll make a zoom here.
go back and zoom on this part. Okay. Uh, now that I've selected these four nodes, uh, choose an equal distance, Z axis, and we'll generate two nodes minus 4.5 and minus 0.27 and click on apply now uh, we have to generate again some elastic links boundary elastic link so same properties add uh, general type same coefficients uh, for the copy elastic link, we have to enter the right distance, which is uh, 454, okay. okay, 414, and click in two nodes here, okay, and okay. Now I have to link these uh, elastic links to um, the other parts of the bridge so to do that uh, we'll use the rigid link this time so click on rigid link zoom on the part where uh, you want to assign this rigid link here now use add here the master node enter 155 uh, we'll use rigid body again I will copy this rigid link x axis 220 meter and you have to select the second node apply now the same for this one so the master node is 153 select this node here apply let's see if it has been applied as we want on this part yes okay it's working now let's do the same for uh, this part okay so The only thing to change is here the distance, which is 414, and the master node 159. Now select the node to link it, OK, and master node, and select node 24, apply. Let's see if uh, it has been assigned correctly on the other side too. Okay, seems to be working. Now it's time to assign the support. So click on define support, go into the front view, use the selection window to select the nodes to fix. Use the zoom option. Again, select these nodes. Come back, zoom on this part too. Okay, now fix everything the translation and the rotation, and click on apply. And you have um, so the modeling of the cable state bridge is over. Next part is uh, very important for cable state bridge. Um, I will show you how the initial cable press stress is working into minus seven. So it is um, it is not so simple to do uh, this because. Um, it is using something called the unit 
unknown load factor and Midas Civil is actually uh, basing the calculation on optimization technique to uh, find the optimum load factors that sus satisfy the specific boundary condition for the structure. So uh, we'll use this method to uh, calculate the initial cable press stress. So it is a procedure like that in uh, six steps. First, uh, the modeling of the bridge, so it's done. The second step is to generate the load condition for the dead load of the main guard girder and the unit pretension load for the cables. After that we'll input the dead load and the unit load, uh, the load combination for the dead loads and unit loads. The, then we will calculate the unload load factor and uh, using the unload load factor function and review the analysis results and calculate the initial pre-stresses. First of all, we'll input the loading condition for the self-weight, uh, the surimpose dead load and the unit loads for the cables to ca calculate the initial pre-stress for the dead load condition. The number of required unknowns initial cable press stress values will be set at 20 as the bridge is a symmetric cable state bridge which has 20 cables on each side of each tower and the input loading condition for each of the 20 cables uh, will be input. So go in the load window, click on static load and here uh, first of all we'll enter the self uh, weight load case select dead load add it then we'll add another dead load which will correspond of the weight of the additional elements on the bridge so also dead load add now we have to define the pretension cables. So uh, name tension one, and it will be a user-defined load. So uh, cable one unit pretension. Click on add. Now we have to add. Uh, 20 times this tension uh, load. In order to do that more conveniently, uh, we'll use the MCT command shell for the input. So it is in the tool tab bar. You have the MCT command shell. The command is um, st, stld case. Click on insert data. And now we have to copy this 20 times. And change the names to two. So sometimes it's faster to do like that than to input everything inside the the interface. Once the data are entered, click on run. And if you come back into the static load cases, you see uh, the tension loads have been assigned. Close that. Now I have to input the self weights. Choose the self weight load case. Minus one. Add. And uh, specify the simple dead loads for the main girder. So static load, beam load element, you have to choose the additional load load case, add, 
uniform load uh, direction global z projection yes then enter the value minus 18.289 to select the elements uh, choose material girder add and click on apply to uh, apply the load now comes uh, the time at which we have to input the unit pretension for each cable so we can go into the front view um, here in stamp prestress click on pretension load and for each uh, load we have to assign tension 1 and the value will be 1 kN and I will use the intersection line to select these two elements. So as it is symmetric I will select at the same time these two apply and I have to do that for the 20 tension loads Okay, now let's go in the isometric view again, and as all the loads are assigned, we can just launch a first analysis. Okay, 